On July 31st, 2022, a YouTube user named OtakuD50 shared a short clip of the opening from the anime series Serial Experiments Lane. It was recorded to tape from a live broadcast with scrolling text on the top of the screen acknowledging the events of the terrorist attack that occurred on September 11, 2001. It didn't take long for this to go viral, with people fascinated by how surreal and profoundly strange it felt, me included. The juxtaposition of a Japanese animation overlaid with text about an American tragedy, the degraded VHS quality, and the show's somber visuals and opening track combined to create a deeply melancholic look through a window at a very specific, irreproducible moment in history. This bizarre clip had a grip on me, and I wanted to figure out how this unique convergence came about. This is the story of KTEH and the Lane episode that aired the week of 9-11. But it's about a lot more than that. It's about... KTEH was a PBS station in San Jose, California that served the South Bay and later expanded to cover more of the San Francisco Bay Area. But what made it stand out was its unique programming. The head of the programming department was a woman named Karen Roberts, who negotiated with program suppliers outside the PBS system to bring shows to the station that hadn't aired in the US before. Many of these programs came from the BBC, like Doctor Who and Red Dwarf. Others were, as you probably guessed, anime series. On Sunday, January 7, 1996, Robotech aired on KTEH, and over the following years, KTEH premiered more and more anime. This included shows like Dirty Pear Flash, Sakura Wars, and even Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, that's right, Evangelion premiered in the United States on a PBS station. Only on the Silicon Valley's home for Japanese anime, KTEH. Viewers were frequently encouraged to donate in order to keep this kind of content running, because licensing it was no easy feat, which resulted in pledge drives like these. We need your help, your pledge of membership support this evening in order to continue obtaining and broadcasting for you these phenomenal series that we're bringing you every Sunday science fiction night without fail. We really do. The man speaking there is Tom Fanella who launched their pledge drives in the first place and was largely responsible for putting KTEH on the map. Otaku D50, who uploaded the lane clip, started recording the anime broadcasts on VHS since they first aired Dirty Pear Flash in late 2000, when he was a teenager. Serial Experiments Lane premiered on KTEH on Sunday, August 12th, 2001. Serial Experiments Lane is a weird show, which makes it airing on a PBS station ever the more perplexing. The show follows a young girl named Lane as she becomes intertwined with The Wired, which is basically the internet of that world. It was the late 90s, and the blurring lines between reality and the digital world was a major point of conversation. Lane was a very atmospheric and psychological show, a far cry from the kind of animated program you'd expect to air on PBS. Lane, one of the most interesting, most highly stylized uh, anime series we have yet been able to bring you. We have been in search of this series for two years. We have been trying and trying and trying to convince the distributor to let us... Then, a month later, the Twin Towers in New York City were targeted in the most infamous terrorist attack in United States history. Media in the aftermath of 9-11 reflects the atmosphere of uncertainty that overtook the public consciousness in America. No one really knew how to act or what to say. What was the appropriate course of action after such a catastrophe? Uh, we are back. Uh, this is our first show since uh, the tragedy in New York City. and uh, uh... A couple years back, I read a book about the history of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and there's a whole section dedicated to how they handled the first show back after 9-11. Steve Carell, who was one of the correspondents at the time, said, I remember Stephen Colbert and I sitting with Jon those days after trying to figure out what to do, what to write, and how to even put on any show. It all just seemed so irrelevant and small. 
It was a strange and confusing time for people who felt powerless just trying to do the right thing. And if you were on air, that feeling was amplified. Smackdown is sports entertainment, but the evil behind Tuesday morning's terrorist attacks is real. Yeah, it also got pretty weird. KTH's travel auction was originally supposed to air the Sunday after 9-11, but due to the attack, it was delayed and replaced with an anime block of Evangelion, Sakura Wars, and Serial Experiments Lane. In retrospect, it's a very strange decision. Lane is a pretty depressing commentary on how the state of the world is changing and becoming unavoidably interconnected. But its airing here was just the result of filling the vacant spot with something they had available. In this case, what was planned to air the following Sunday. KTEH doesn't exist anymore. It was acquired by KQED, and Karen Roberts, the head of programming, passed away in 2006. Tom Fanella passed away a year later. It wasn't until late 2020 when Otaku D50 uploaded a clip of one of the pledge drives from KTEH's broadcast of Soccer Wars on the recommendation of a friend who thought people may find it interesting. Kenny Lauderdale, a content creator who covers older and oftentimes obscure anime, watched it on stream and asked Otaku if he had any more recordings like it. When Otaku went back to recover the Lane donation pledges, the scrolling text caught his attention. But at first, he didn't realize the connection to 9-11. After all, 9-11 wasn't referred to as 9-11 immediately after it happened, so the broadcast only referred to an American tragedy. Only by figuring out the air dates did Otaku manage to piece it together. He didn't realize that this whole time, he'd been sitting on a lost media gem. This sort of thing is not uncommon. Just last year, a VHS recording of a SpongeBob SquarePants Got Milk commercial that was previously considered lost media was found and uploaded by the Toon Archivist. It also aired in 2001, and there were no traces of it anywhere, aside from people's memories. And I know for a lot of people, 2001 doesn't seem like that long ago, so talking about it like uncovering history sounds weird. But it really was a different time in a lot of ways. There was internet, of course, but brands didn't upload their own advertisements like they do now. And why would a PBS station bother to archive a Lane episode with scrolling text that was always meant to be temporary? The only way these sorts of things would survive was if someone at home just so happened to record it on their VCR at the time of airing. Combine that with the fact that VHS tapes degrade over the years, especially if they're not stored in an ideal environment, and the odds of some of this media making it out is slim. But that's also what makes it all so fascinating. It's history preserved by ordinary people, most of whom didn't think what they recorded would be significant. They recorded it because they liked it or they just wanted to rewatch what was broadcast. And with websites like the Internet Archive, some of these ephemeral moments in media can now be accessed at any time by anyone. There are a lot of parts to this story that felt weirdly tailored to my interests. I got into Serial Experiments Lane a couple years back, as it's been going through somewhat of a recent resurgence in popularity lately. I've always found myself drawn to lost or obscure media, particularly late 90s and early 2000s. I even worked at a PBS station in the Bay Area for a bit. And I'm really fascinated by media in the aftermath of September 11th. I was born in 2000. While I can read or review the history, the exact feeling is something I'll never be able to fully understand since I didn't really live through it. I get that the Lane tape may seem mundane. I realize it's not the most interesting documented acknowledgement of 9-11, it's far from it. It's scrolling text on a television station on the other side of the country airing a program from the other side of the world. In a way, it feels disconnected. Maybe that's why it's so compelling. It may seem inconsequential because it's the quiet reaction that usually gets forgotten with time. Like Lane in the opening, as she pauses to notice the world around her change, and then continues on her way. Despite the tense uncertainty, life goes on. Thank you to Otaku D50 
not only for preserving this interesting moment in history, but also for answering my questions. His channel is in the description if you want to check out all the original clips for yourself.